back. I'm excited that they're here too. Um, today is all about talking to you guys about um, safety when you're on the internet. And I feel like sometimes uh, the device that's in your hands has so many things that it can do that can potentially harm you. And you, and you might not know what those are. So we are going to have uh, Officer Olszewski, our SRO, share some really important information with you today regarding social media. He's also going to be talking about some other really important things that um, I've been hearing a lot about, parents have been hearing a lot about, it's the Lucia and the teachers. And that is David. So we're going to be having some honest conversation about that too. So hopefully we can help you make good decisions. All right, so let's give a nice round of applause for our officer. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, so most of you here know me. My name is Officer Henry Olszewski. I'm the school resource officer here at Georgetown. I've been in Georgetown for the last four years as a police officer. Uh, been, this is my second year as a school resource officer. Um, a little bit of background for those of you that don't know me. I've been in law enforcement for 10 years as a police officer, and prior to that, I worked for 20 years as a paramedic on the ambulance. So I've spent literally my whole adult life in public safety. So one of the things we're gonna talk about today is proper use of social media, and I know you guys all know what social media is. Some of you know a little bit more about it than I do. So, by a show of hands, who here has a cell phone? Oh boy. Okay, hands down. So, I presume with all those cell phones, everyone has all the different apps that go along with it. So we're gonna discuss some things to do with social media, but first I wanna touch on something that Ms. Monjo talked about, and that's vaping. We've heard a lot about vaping this year, and even some of the people in the seventh and eighth grade have been talking about it. So, what I hold in my hand is a, a giant pamphlet of all the laws, rules, and regulations in the state of Massachusetts for va vaping. And the most important one is you need to be 18 years of age to purchase any of the materials that go along with this, the paraphernalia. The FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, they regulate this stuff, and they have determined that it is a nicotine product, which means it is addictive, just like cigarettes. So as you guys know, cigarettes are not allowed in school. Smoking is not allowed in school. You need to be 18 years old to purchase cigarettes. And I'm sure a lot of you know people that do smoke, they are addicted to smoking, and it causes lung cancer and a host of other uh, illnesses. So, we are on the lookout for all the material. We know what it looks like, we know what it smells like, we know where it is, how you guys are using it. I don't know where you're getting it, but I'm looking into that as well. So just be forewarned, it's something that is on our radar, we know it's out there. We know some of you are carrying it around in your backpacks, pockets, so, you can't have this stuff at school. And if we catch you, we'll be having a very serious conversation about it, okay? So, let's move on to the social media aspect. We're gonna start off with a video, because I wanna get some common misconceptions out of the way. that in person. 
person because it's, you know, it's inappropriate, and I knew that. If you're talking to someone in person, you're, you know, face to face, and then you're actually having a real conversation. It's, it's easier to experiment online. It seems like it is your diary, in a way, because you think you have the password and it's secret, but it's not secret, and people can get in. We have an um, agency down in southern Massachusetts that will help us get into cell phones, computers, anything that we need to. We can also subpoena the court to allow us to follow any of your active accounts. So just because it's got a password doesn't mean that it's private or protected. Screenshots, I'm sure you guys know all about those. Snapchat, that's a big one. Everyone loves Snapchat because it goes away. I'm sure a lot of you have been involved in situations where somebody screenshotted something and you're like, oh, well, it tells you if it's screenshotted, so you'll know. Not if my friend screenshots it. And then they send it to all their friends. And now whatever that was that you thought was private between you and that other person is no longer private. So you gotta be really careful. And there's a lot of laws that go along with that we're gonna discuss in a little while. So. There's a big takeaway here, starting off this presentation, is what I always hear from everybody goes, I was only joking. It's a perfect excuse, right? It's not an excuse. Well, I didn't mean it. I was just kidding. I didn't know. So today I'm here to tell you that it's not an excuse. Joking doesn't, it doesn't come. If you send it, then you meant it. And that's how we're going to treat it. So from this day forward, you don't have that excuse anymore that you didn't know, because now you do. So you're gonna hear me repeat this throughout the day today. That kidding around, joking, that doesn't work. So let's talk about harassment. There's something in the law called a harassment prevention order. And harassment is when somebody's contacting you and you don't want them to. And you tell them, hey, stop emailing me, stop calling me, stop texting me. And they don't. They won't. So your parents can petition the court, and I can help you do this, and the court will make them stop legally. So what the definition of harassment is, is it's three or more unwanted contacts by anyone. And it doesn't have to be three emails. It can be a voicemail, an email, and a text message, or any combination of any of those things. But if you send three or more unwanted contacts to anyone, then you're in violation of the law. So that's very important to know because you might think, oh, I'm just fooling around, I'm goofing off. I'm going to keep sending these. Three. That's it. That's all you get. And then it's something that we can go through the court systems and address. <coughs> so just think about that when you're out there sending all this information around. Officer Henry, can I just ask a question to the audience? How many of you know that if someone's asking you or online, is there a way that you can stop that person from contacting you? Raise your hand if you know. Okay, what's it called, everyone? Oh, okay. Awesome. All right, so you know you can block people. That's an effective way of doing things. You, can, you also need to talk to your parents or a trusted adult and let them know what's going on. Because too often I find in situations, and I do have these cases where kids are getting involved with snap rooms, chat rooms, and they're talking to people and they don't like the way that things are going, but they don't tell anyone. 
So you can tell anyone here at the school, obviously anyone at home, you can come see me, I'm here every day. Let us know, we'll help you. So I'm gonna read you the definition of harassment, just so that we know what it means. So it's willful and malicious intent to do harm. And what, what, what that means is that it was done on purpose. So if you're bothering somebody purposely, telling lies, telling stories about something, the way they look, or what they did at school, or who they're dating, that can all be considered harassment. So, anybody have any questions about harassment? Yes, sir. Uh, well, it can be considered harassment. If you're talking about like the uh, telemarketers, people trying to sell you things on the phone, yeah, it's more annoying than anything. Um, but they're not trying to cause harm to you. And that's part of the definition. That's kind of why I, I read the definition because if they were putting something online saying that you were stealing, you know, or something, that, that could be harmful to you. So when they're just calling trying to sell you something, it's more annoying, annoying than it is harassment. Anyone else? Yes, sir, in the back. So, can harassment be unintentional, or does it have to be intentional? It, it can be, it's, it can start out unintentional. You might just be fooling around. But once the person lets you know, hey, knock it off, I don't like this, stop, leave me alone, then if it continues, then that's where it changes from unintentional to intentionally harassing someone. Anyone else before we move on to the next subject? Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is bullying. And obviously this is a big deal. Been a lot of stuff on the news for a few years now. Um, and I'm going to read you the definition of bullying so that you understand what it is when we start talking about it. It is the repeated use by one or more student. It's written or verbal, and it can be also electronic now, causing physical uh, a physical act or a gesture or any combination thereof directed at a victim or victims that causes physical or emotional harm or damages the victim's property. So you, you don't have to put your hands on somebody to be bullying. It can be emotional. So when you start saying mean things, talking mean about them in, in groups, um, anything like that, that's all considered bullying. And the school takes that very seriously. And they investigate these things all the time because they, they bring me in uh, when they do. So with bullying, the most important thing is to let somebody know. If you feel you're in a situation where somebody's bullying you, then you need to talk to me about it. And the reason we bring it up today is because I'm going to go right into cyberbullying. Because when I went to school, once you left school, the bullying, if it was happening, would stop. Today it doesn't. The bullies can reach out to you electronically 24 7 365 so even when you go home when you're on the bus you got that phone in your hand it can continue so you got to let somebody know if it's going on go talk to one of the guidance counselors talk to the principal the vice principal you can talk to me any of the teachers but we're here to help we've dealt with it a lot if you know a friend that you think might be being bullied you know, try to talk to them or bring them to talk to one of us. It's very important. It's, it's a very serious thing. So cyberbullying, through the use of technology or any electronic communication which shall include but not limited to writings, images, sounds, data, or intelligence that's transmitted in whole or in part over the internet. So cell phones, computers, Snapchat, Musical.ly, Instagram, Twitter, have I missed any? Facebook. Yeah, that's kind of for old people now, isn't it? <laughs> kind of what I thought. Yes, sir. Yellow? Oh, okay. So there's, there's multiple apps out there. Hold on, I got another question here. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, you can. And that's and that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, as, as Ms. Bonjo said earlier, if you have these things pop up, you can block them. And that's what you should be doing right away. Because you don't want to let this go any further where you have to get the police involved. So 
People start saying strange things, acting weird, being silly. Just block them, move on. And I had a case last year with a student here who had some inappropriate things sent to her in the chat room. I said, well, by who? She said, oh, by one of my friends. I said, oh, what's your friend's name? She's like, what? No, I just know his screen name. I said, oh, well, does he live here in town? Well, no, I don't, I don't know. Well, where does he live? Does he live in Haverhill? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, how old is he? Um, I'm not sure. She referred to this person as her friend. She knew nothing about them. So we did a little research at the police department. It turns out it was a 45-year-old guy living in Philadelphia. Oh. Right? So these things really happen here in Georgetown, at your school, with your friends. So thankfully, she was smart enough to bring it to the teacher, who brought it to the guidance counselor, who called me in. And then the police department did a little investigation. We figured out what was going on. So you gotta be careful. There's people out there. So any questions about cyberbullying? Yes, in the back. It's 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 just like regular bullying. It's just through electronic communication. So instead of Every day when I see you in the lunchroom, and I come up and bully you in the lunchroom every day, same thing, all those mean things that I would say, or make, that the way I would make you feel in the lunchroom, I just do it over the computer, or over the phone. I just keep texting you or sending emails, to make you feel that same way. Can I just say one other thing, Officer Henry, if you don't yes. mind? A lot of times, people come into my office and um, when I begin the investigation and questioning, they tell me that it's been happening for months. And I would just encourage you all that if there's something that's happening, you want to bring it to the attention of your parents or somebody that you trust right away, okay? Because I don't want you going through situations where months go by or six months and you're facing something that we could have helped you with at that time, okay? That's absolutely correct, and that's why I mentioned it as well. There's no need for you to go through it for that long. We're here to help you, that's our job. So if you need help, reach out to us. We'll take care of it. That's what we do. So don't let it go on for any longer than it absolutely has to. Question on the day. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think a lot of these websites now and apps all have the reporting buttons um, that you can let people know you can report to the company that actually owns the, the app or the website, um, which is nice. All right, so we're gonna talk about some other things that commonly come up. And one of the big things is civil rights. And I know it's a word, two words that you've probably heard a lot, but maybe you don't know a lot about. So we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about what they are, what they mean. So you're, you're, you, you can be uh, guilty of harassing someone because of a civil rights violation. So what does that mean? So what your civil rights are, it says, everyone shall be free from any discrimination on account of their race, color, religion, creed, national origin, sex, ancestry, physical or mental disabilities. And we're gonna go deeper into that. So to sum that up, you can't make fun of somebody because they're different than you. That's a really good way to think of it. So if somebody's different than you, you can't make fun of them for that. Just because they're taller than you, or shorter than you, or have longer hair, or blue eyes. So let's talk a little bit about what race is. I'm Polish. There's some people that are Italian, French, German. That's what your race is. So that's covered under civil rights. Religion. There's different religions out there in the world. We all know what religion not is. A lot of us go to church. You have different churches. Creed. This is a, an interesting one. And I'll read the definition. It's any system or doctrine or formula of religious belief. Belief. So it's your religious, your religious belief or opinion. So that's also protected. 
So your national origin, that's just being from a particular country or from a particular part of the world. And then we have your sex, which is male or female, your ancestry, which is the, the origin or background of your family, where your family comes from. And then physical or mental disabilities. So if you have difficulty hearing or difficulty with your vision or anything else, these are all protected under your civil rights. And if these civil rights get violated, it can be a crime. And we do investigate civil rights violations here in Georgetown. We did have a case last year here. So once again, I don't want you to think I'm talking about things that aren't relevant, that don't happen here in town, because they do. So I want to touch on the same thing I stated earlier. You can't say you were just joking. You can't say you were just kidding around. Because now you have the information. You've been told what these things mean. You've been told that you can't make fun of somebody because they're different than you. Does anyone have any questions about any of the civil rights things? Okay. So the next thing is a little bit of a touchy subject. And originally, when I first got this job, I didn't think I was going to have to talk to you guys about it. But then somebody did it in the sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. So it's sexting. We all know what it is, but I'm going to tell you what the law is. And this is a lot more serious than you guys probably think, because I see a lot of people smiling out there. So if you're taking nude pictures of yourself or somebody else, and you have it on your phone, that's a crime. That is possession of child pornography. It's a felony in the state of Massachusetts. It's a minimum of two and a half year prison sentence. Minimum. Just because it's your body or somebody else's, you're under the age of 18, it's considered pornography. So if you want to double the crime, you send it to somebody. Now that's called dissemination of child pornography, which means you're distributing it. You're sending it out. That's another felony. So be very careful what you do with these phones because you can get in big trouble and this will follow you for the rest of your life. So don't be out there taking pictures of things you shouldn't be taking pictures of, period. Somebody catches it, somebody sees it, somebody Snapchats it, somebody's looking over your shoulder and sees it on your phone, they report it to somebody, you're gonna go down a road you do not want to be going down. So stay away from that stuff. And I also want to mention with that, people don't realize when you're on these sites, there's people monitoring them. I'm sure everyone in here, well, most people probably have a Facebook, even though I know it's for old people now. Employers look at those things to see whether or not they want to hire you. When I got hired as a police officer, my chief went on social media and looked for any account you could find with my name on it to see what my pictures were, who I was hanging out with, was there any alcohol in my photos, was there any a behavior that he wasn't okay with. So be very well aware that these things are accessible to the public and they can view them. And even if they're private, it says a lot about you, what you have on your, your cover page. So just think before you start putting these things up before you start sending these things out, because you can't take it back. So we had some celebrities last year that took some inappropriate pictures on their own personal stuff in their own personal houses. Where did it go? The cloud. Who has access to the cloud? The government. The government. That's right. And apparently hackers as well, because hackers hacked into the cloud stole all these inappropriate pictures of all these celebrities and blackmailed them. But yeah, if you want your pictures back, we're gonna need millions of dollars. So just because you guys delete it, erase it, whatever it is that you do with it, it goes to the cloud. And if we go to the court and get a subpoena, we can have access to all of that. And it doesn't ever go away. So just, just be cognizant of that. Think about that when you're out there doing these things. I know it's all fun and games in the moment, but when you're 25 years old, you don't want to still be paying for something you did when you were 
7th and 8th grade. Any questions on that? So let's talk about consequences, and then we're going to watch one more video and we're going to discuss that. So you have consequences that happen in life. You do something wrong, there's a consequence. You do something right, there's a consequence. So consequences starting here, maybe as minor as you get caught doing something with Snapchat or Facebook and you get kicked off the team. Maybe you were a sports fanatic, you might have been a star athlete. That's a minor consequence. You kicked off the team, you can't play, maybe for this year, maybe you can go back on the team next year. Um, it might get worse. You might get suspended, maybe in school suspension for a day or two. Or even worse than that, maybe you get out of school suspension. Well, at the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen to you? You can get expelled, you just get thrown out of school. And then what are you going to do? Trying to get a good job without a high school diploma, without a good education. So there are consequences to our actions. And I talked to some of you last year about a specific case, which I'm going to go over with you now. Michelle Carter. She was a 16-year-old girl. She had a boyfriend. They were fighting. She texted him to kill himself. So he said, he was going to go take his car, go in the garage, shut the garage door, start the car, let the garage fill up with carbon monoxide from the, from the car. And she said, good, you should do it. Go ahead, go do it. Well, halfway through, he had second thoughts. He got out of that truck, choking, drooling, and he climbed out of the, the garage, out into fresh air, and he texted her, and he said, I couldn't do it. And she sent him a text back that said, you go get back in that truck right now. And he did. And he died. And so when I talked to you guys last year about this case, it was still in litigation. But the ruling has come down, and she has been convicted. She's now 18. And she's been sentenced to two and a half years in prison for involuntary manslaughter from a text message. She will be in a nine foot by nine foot concrete box with metal bars every day, all day. She does get three showers a week, I guess, if that's cool. She missed her prom. She missed her junior social. She missed all the important things in her life that she was looking forward to. She, all her friends are now gone because of this whole trial. Her parents are devastated. Her boyfriend's parents are devastated. And she's gonna spend the next two and a half years sitting in a prison cell thinking about that text message. So when you get ready to hit the send button, please think about what is on the other end and what the consequences are because it can happen, it has happened. There's case law on it now. Now we know what to do. You do that, that's what happens. So, bless you. We're gonna watch one more quick video and then we're gonna do a quick discussion on that. How are we doing on time? Okay.
um, the legal role or I guess requirements for bystanders. So you're not the person that's being bullied. You're not the person that's doing the bullying, but you're in a you're in a situation where whatever form of social media, you know that it's happening. What should you do? What's your legal obligation? Okay, I don't know if anyone heard that, but I'm gonna kind of just briefly go over it. So if there's a situation going on and somebody's being bullied, and there's there's a person that knows it's going on, a bystander, if you will. How do you address that? How do you handle that as a bystander? Well, we talked a little bit about that last week in Say Something, or two weeks ago. Instead of being a bystander, you can be an upstander, which means you support the person, you go and tell somebody, you tell a trusted adult, a, a parent, a teacher, a guidance counselor. You gotta let somebody know, you gotta do the right thing. Legally, there is no obligation. So, we encourage all of you to be upstanders, and if you see something, you say something. And that goes into every facet of your life. I just wanted to say real quick about that. Um, in the see something, say something after that, some things came forward to Ms. Francis and myself where people stepped up to help other kids that were in crisis. And I know when I come around and advise you and I talk to you and you say, well, I'm not going to tell. We as adults can only be at a certain place. You guys really know you're the pulse of the school, right? And so the way that I tell people that come to my office and share information, I say, you know what? Thank you because you're going to help the situation. And that's the way I want you to look at it, you guys. You're, yes, you're telling, but you're actually helping us as a school to deal with issues to turn them around. And if we don't say something, it stays the same, yes? So I need you to think. It's helping us as a community when we say something. And I want to follow up on that because I know everyone's worried about ratting people out. I don't want to be a rat, I want to snitch. There's a difference, let me describe it to you. Ratting somebody out or snitching on them is you do that because you want that other person to get in trouble. You want them to get hurt. You want them to have some harm come to them. You want to rat out Mary that she kissed Johnny so that her boyfriend will break up with her because her boyfriend's not Johnny. So that's ratting and snitching. Sorry to all Mary's and Johnny's in the room. So when you say something, guys, when you say something that helps somebody, because somebody's having a hard time, that's the difference. If you say something that helps someone, then it's not ratting, it's not snitching. Because somebody might be having a hard time and they might not just not have the strength to tell someone because they're so hurting or they're so sad or they're, they're so, and so, they think they're gonna get in so much trouble. So if you can just help that person out, find a trusted adult, say something, it's very important. And they'll probably thank you for it. And I'll end with a story that just happened here in town. So we had a 16-year-old girl go uh, missing in a town next door. And I used to work over there as a police officer. So a couple of the guys called me and said, hey, we got a 16-year-old girl, she ran away. And um, I was trying to help them find her, and it turned out that through some people that I knew, and through some people here at the school, we were able to say something to the right people and get her home safe. So nobody got in trouble, and at the end of the day, it was a very important message to her because she was pretty upset at the beginning when we first found her. She was angry, and she was yelling at all of us. The next day, she called everybody, and she thanked them, and she said, you guys probably saved my life because she was getting in a lot of trouble. So that's the difference between ratting on somebody and just being an upstander, being a good person, doing the right thing, and saying something to help somebody out. Any other questions from anyone? So I think earlier when we talked about the pictures and um, how the pictures have a, uh, they're considered pornography and they're in the jail and they're going to put them automatically. Uh, can you talk about how I think sometimes that scares everyone to say, oh, I can't say anything now because now I'll go to jail. Someone sent me a picture. So could you kind of like wrap, come back around to that? 
pretty quiet. So what do you do? You wake up in the morning, you get ready for school, pick up your phone. Oh my God, there's a picture on there. Um, so what you need to do is report it right away. If you leave it on your phone, don't tell anybody, that's how you become guilty. If you grab your phone and run to your parents and say, hey, I, I don't know where this came from, I, I don't know what's going on, but this just popped up on my phone, and I, I don't want anything to do with it. I'm all good, I'm out. So that's what you need to do. You need to tell somebody the second you find it. Every second that goes by that you don't tell somebody, the guilty clock is ticking. Because now you gotta tell them why. Well, we've got it four hours ago. How come you didn't tell me four hours? Do you know a person? It starts making you look worse and worse. You see it, you report it. To any teacher, parent, police officer, we'll take it from there. It's a very, very serious thing. Don't get wrapped up in it, don't get involved in it. Stay away. Great question, thank you. Anyone else, anything else before we go? Okay, so I would like to ask that the seventh graders go out the two side doors and the eighth graders are going to exit through the back. Thank you so much.